In mathematics, the LP spaces are function spaces defined using a natural generalization of the p-norm for finite dimensional vector spaces. They are sometimes called Lebesgue spaces, named after Henry Lebesgue, although according to the Bourbaki group they were first introduced by Frigius Rees. LP spaces form an important class of Banach spaces in functional analysis, and of topological vector spaces. Lebesgue spaces have applications in physics, statistics, finance, engineering, and other disciplines. The p-norm in finite dimensions. The length of a vector x equals in the n-dimensional real vector space Rn is usually given by the Euclidean norm. The Euclidean distance between two points x and y is the length x minus y2 of the straight line between the two points. In many situations, the Euclidean distance is insufficient for capturing the actual distances in a given space. An analogy to this can be found in Manhattan taxi drivers who should measure distance not in terms of the length of the straight line to their destination, but in terms of the Manhattan distance, which takes into account that streets are either orthogonal or parallel to each other. Definition for a real number P1, the P norm or LP norm of X is defined by the Euclidean norm from above falls into this class and is the 2 norm, and the 1 norm is the norm that corresponds to the Manhattan distance. The L infinity norm or maximum norm is the limit of the LP norms for P infinity. It turns out that this limit is equivalent to the following definition. CL infinity. For all P1, the P norms and maximum norm as defined above indeed satisfy the properties of a length function, which are that only the zero vector has zero length. The length of the vector is positive homogeneous with respect to multiplication by a scalar, and the length of the sum of two vectors is no larger than the sum of lengths of the vectors. Abstractly speaking, this means that Rn together with the p-norm is a Banach space. This Banach space is the LP space over Rn. Relations between p-norms The grid distance between two points is never shorter than the length of the line segment between them. Formally, this means that the Euclidean norm of any vector is bounded by its one norm. This fact generalizes to p-norms in that the p-norm x, p of any given vector x does not grow with p, x, p plus a, x, p for any vector x and real numbers p1 and a 0. For the opposite direction, the following relation between the 1 norm and the 2 norm is known. This inequality depends on the dimension n of the underlying vector space and follows directly from the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. In general, for vectors in Cn where 0 less than r less than p, when 0 less than p less than 1 in Rn for n greater than 1, the formula defines an absolutely homogeneous function of degree 1 for 0 less than p less than 1. However, the resulting function does not define an f norm, because it is not subadditive. In Rn for n greater than 1, the formula for 0 less than p less than 1 defines a subadditive function, which does define an f norm. This f norm is homogeneous of degree p. However, the function defines a metric. The metric space is denoted by np. Although the p unit ball be np around the origin in this metric is concave, the topology defined on Rn by the metric dp is the usual vector space topology of Rn, hence np is a locally convex topological vector space. Beyond this qualitative statement, a quantitative way to measure the lack of convexity of NP is to denote by CP the smallest constant C such that the multiple CBNP of the P unit ball contains the convex hull of BNP equal to BN1. The fact that for fixed P less than 1 we have shows that the infinite dimensional sequence space P defined below is no longer locally convex. When p equals 0 there is one zero norm and another function called the zero norm. The mathematical definition of the zero norm was established by Banach's theory of linear operations. The space of sequences has a complete metric topology provided by the f norm which is discussed by Stefan Rolevich in metric linear spaces. The zero-normed space is studied in functional analysis, 
probability theory, and harmonic analysis. Another function was called the zero norm by David Donahoe, whose quotation marks warn that this function is not a proper norm, is the number of non-zero entries of the vector x. Many authors abuse terminology by omitting the quotation marks. Defining OO equals zero, the zero norm of x is equal to this is not a norm because it is not homogeneous. Despite these defects as a mathematical norm, the non-zero counting norm has uses in scientific computing, information theory, and statistics, notably in compressed sensing in signal processing and computational harmonic analysis. The p-norm in countably infinite dimensions and p-spaces. The p-norm can be extended to vectors that have an infinite number of components, which yields the space p. This contains as special cases, 1. The space of sequences whose series is absolutely convergent, 2. The space of square summable sequences, which is a Hilbert space, and infinity, the space of bounded sequences. The space of sequences has a natural vector space structure by applying addition and scalar multiplication coordinate by coordinate. Explicitly, the vector sum and the scalar action for infinite sequences of real numbers are given by. Define the p-norm. Here, a complication arises, namely that the series on the right is not always convergent. So for example, the sequence made up of only ones will have an infinite p-norm for 1 p less than infinity. The space p is then defined as the set of all infinite sequences of real numbers such that the p-norm is finite. One can check that as p increases, the set p grows smaller. For example, the sequence is not in 1, but it is in p for p greater than 1, as the series diverges for p equals 1, but is convergent for p greater than 1. One also defines the infinity norm using the supremum, and the corresponding space infinity of all bounded sequences. It turns out that if the right-hand side is finite, or the left-hand side is infinite, thus, we will consider p spaces for 1 p infinity. The p norm thus defined on p is indeed a norm, and p together with this norm is a Banach space. The fully general LP space is obtained, as seen below, by considering vectors, not only with finitely or countably infinitely many components, but with arbitrarily many components, in other words, functions. An integral instead of a sum is used to define the p-norm. LP spaces An LP space may be defined as a space of functions for which the pth power of the absolute value is Lebesgue integrable. More generally, let 1 p less than infinity and be a measure space. Consider the set of all measurable functions from S to C or R whose absolute value raised to the pth power has finite integral, or equivalently, that the set of such functions forms a vector space, with the following natural operations. For every scalar lambda, that the sum of two pth power integrable functions is again pth power integrable follows from the inequality in fact, more is true. Minkowski's inequality says the triangle inequality holds for p. Thus the set of pth power integrable functions, together with the function p, is a seminormed vector space, which is denoted by this can be made into a normed vector space in a standard way. One simply takes the quotient space with respect to the kernel of p. Since for any measurable function f, we have that f p equals 0 if and only if f equals 0 almost everywhere. The kernel of p does not depend upon p. In the quotient space, two functions f and g are identified if f equals g almost everywhere. The resulting normed vector space is, by definition, for p equals infinity, the space L infinity is defined as follows. We start with the set of all measurable functions from S to C or R which are bounded. Again two such functions are identified if they are equal almost everywhere. Denote this set by L infinity. For a function f in this set, its essential supremum serves as an appropriate norm. As before, if there exists q less than infinity such that f l infinity l q, then for 1 p infinity, l p is a Banach space. 
The fact that LP is complete is often referred to as the Rees-Fisher theorem. Completeness can be checked using the convergence theorems for Lebesgue integrals. When the underlying measure space S is understood, LP is often abbreviated LP, or just LP. The above definitions generalize to Bochner spaces. Special cases similar to the P spaces, L2 is the only Hilbert space among LP spaces. In the complex case, the inner product on L2 is defined by the additional inner product structure allows for a richer theory, with applications to, for instance, Fourier series and quantum mechanics. Functions in L2 are sometimes called quadratically integrable functions, square integrable functions or square summable functions. But sometimes these terms are reserved for functions that are square integrable in some other sense, such as in the sense of a Riemann integral. If we use complex-valued functions, the space L infinity is a commutative C asterisk algebra with pointwise multiplication and conjugation. For many measure spaces, including all sigma finite ones, it is in fact a commutative von Neumann algebra. An element of L infinity defines a bounded operator on any LP space by multiplication. For 1P infinity the P spaces are a special case of LP spaces, when S equals N, and mu is the counting measure on N. More generally, if one considers any set S with the counting measure, the resulting LP space is denoted P. For example, the space P is the space of all sequences indexed by the integers, and when defining the P norm on such a space, one sums over all the integers. The space P, where n is the set with n elements, is Rn with its P norm as defined above. As any Hilbert space, every space L2 is linearly isometric to a suitable 2, where the cardinality of the set I is the cardinality of an arbitrary Hilbertian basis for this particular L2. Properties of LP spaces Dual space is the dual space of LP for 1 less than P less than infinity has a natural isomorphism with LQ, where Q is such that 1, P plus 1, Q equals 1. This isomorphism associates GLQ with the functional kappa PLP defined by for every the fact that kappa P is well defined and continuous follows from holders inequality. Kappa P, LQ LP is a linear mapping which is an isometry by the extremal case of Holder's inequality. It is also possible to show that in any GLP can be expressed this way, i.e., that Kappa P is onto. Since Kappa P is onto an isometric, it is an isomorphism of Banach spaces. With this isomorphism in mind, it is usual to say simply that LQ is the dual Banach space of LP. For 1 less than P less than infinity, the space LP is reflexive. Let kappa P be as above and let kappa Q, LP LQ be the corresponding linear isometry. Consider the map from LP to LP, obtained by composing kappa Q with the transpose of the inverse of kappa P. This map coincides with the canonical embedding J of LP into its visual. Moreover, the map JP is on 2, as composition of 2 onto isometries, and this proves reflexivity. If the measure mu on S is sigma finite, then the dual of L1 is isometrically isomorphic to L infinity onto L1. The dual of L infinity is subtler. Elements of L infinity can be identified with bounded signed finitely additive measures on S that are absolutely continuous with respect to mu. See bar space for more details. If we assume the axiom of choice, this space is much bigger than L1 except in some trivial cases. However, Sahar and Scheller prove that there are relatively consistent extensions of zamello frankel set theory in which the dual of infinity is 1. Embeddings colloquially, if 1p less than q infinity, then lp contains functions that are more locally singular, while elements of lq can be more spread out. Consider the Lebesgue measure on the half line. A continuous function in L1 might blow up near zero but must decay sufficiently fast toward infinity. On the other hand, continuous functions in L infinity need not decay at all but no blow up is allowed. The precise technical result is the following. 
Suppose that 0 less than p less than q infinity. Then, LQLPIFFS does not contain sets of arbitrarily large but finite measure, and LPLQIFFS does not contain sets of arbitrarily small but non-zero measure. In both cases the embedding is continuous, in that the identity operator is a bounded linear map from LQ to LP in the first case and LP to LQ in the second. Indeed, if the domain S has finite measure, one can make the following explicit calculation via Jensen's inequality. The constant appearing in the above inequality is optimal, in the sense that the operator norm of the identity I, LQ LP is precisely the case of equality being achieved exactly when F equals 1 mu A, E. Dense subspaces throughout this section we assume that 1 P less than infinity. Let be a measure space. An integrable simple function f on s is one of the form where aj is scalar, aj sigma has finite measure and is the indicator function of the set, for j equals 1. By construction of the integral, the vector space of integrable simple functions is dense in LP. More can be said when S is a metrizable topological space and sigma its Borel sigma algebra, i.e., the smallest sigma algebra of subsets of S containing the open sets. Suppose Vs is an open set with mu less than infinity. It can be proved that for every Borel set A sigma contained in V, and for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a closed set F and an open set U such that it follows that there exists phi continuous on S such that if S can be covered by an increasing sequence of open sets that have finite measure, then the space of P integrable continuous functions is dense in LP. More precisely, one can use bounded continuous functions that vanish outside one of the open sets Vn. This applies in particular when S equals road and when mu is the Leber's game measure. The space of continuous and compactly supported functions is dense in LP. Similarly, the space of integrable step functions is dense in LP. This space is the linear span of indicator functions of bounded intervals when d equals 1, of bounded rectangles when d equals 2 and more generally of products of bounded intervals. Several properties of general functions in LP are first proved for continuous and compactly supported functions, then extended by density to all functions. For example, it is proved this way that translations are continuous on LP in the following sense, where applications, LP spaces are widely used in mathematics and applications. Hausdorff-Young inequality the Fourier transform for the real line maps LP to LQ to Q, where 1 P2 and 1 P plus 1 Q equals 1. This is a consequence of the ries thorin interpolation theorem, and is made precise with the Hausdorff-Young inequality. By contrast, if P greater than 2, the Fourier transform does not map into LQ. Hilbert spaces Hilbert spaces are central to many applications, from quantum mechanics to stochastic calculus. The spaces L2 and 2 are both Hilbert spaces. In fact, by choosing a Hilbert basis, one sees that all Hilbert spaces are isometric to 2, where E is a set with an appropriate cardinality. Statistics in statistics, measures of central tendency and statistical dispersion, such as the mean, median, and standard deviation, are defined in terms of LP metrics, and measures of central tendency can be characterized as solutions to variational problems.